What's up guys, welcome back to Frankfurt Regionals. We are here for round 14, the final round. Um, we're at a win and in situation for these players uh, before we hit top cut of this regional. Uh, I'm Joe Yates and again I'm joined by Benedict Hugo. Yeah, we have like uh, uh, players, um, Ilya from Russia and Gavin from the UK. They both play some very interesting versions of boss wall, but like some spicy text in it. Like uh, Gavin is playing Saigard and uh, <clears throat> Ilya is also playing like one one line of Rockruff and Sorak as well. So fighting decks. <laughs> <laughs> it's it. This is the fighting binder drop deck. Yeah, it is. Well, it is. This, car this card is the same color as this card. I will. I will play. Can it attack together. with the fighting? Okay, I'll play it. it it's re it's really well. It's hard to even call these buzz wall lists. That's just like really just the most recognizable card. In some of them. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, <laughs> but to be fair, they both play buzz wall GX. They do both play buzz wall GX. And they um, both play buzz wall. And they both play buzz wall. And they both play rock roll. And they both and play. They both play <laughs> you the, get the idea, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the most different shows of different cards beginning with Z. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they have because in on one camp we got Ilya who's running Zerork Buzzwall and then on the other side we've got Gavin here who is playing Zygarde Buzzwall. Yeah. I I I I do not know how this matchup goes. I I'll, I'll be mean, either, mean either. The I've, thing is like okay uh Ilya's uh, Zorox have uh, fighting weakness but then again he plays weakness policies which are quite popular this weekend so it um, depends on when he can attack and when he can get rid of the weakness policies. Well, he plays the two weakness policies, but Gavin has managed to fit two field lower. Yeah. List, so, sure. Um, and on that note, Gavin's also gone for a lovely two counter B string. So that to me tells me that Zygarde is his main focus, and that it, the Buzzwall is just I have fighting energy. It mm -hmm. would be crazy not to play it. You know. Like one of the most surprising things is that none of them play Macago. Yeah, absolutely. Like in the interview with Alex, he told us like it's so good. Especially when you play B-strings, like Gavin is doing. Um, you want them when you need them, and with Makago you do that. And none of them play Makago. Yeah, exactly. And we were just talking about how it was like one of the most popular cards that we've yeah, seen we in this whole pretty tournament. pretty much every round. But At least a 1-1 one, one line. <laughs> but these guys have clearly done pretty decently well throughout yeah, this whole they tournament did, they did. Um, without but ever needing it. Both are for when, and they did uh, they did decently also in the, like, in the uh, newest uh, past. Like, uh, Gavin went 10th at the Shuffle Regional, and Ilya got at the Russian Nationals first, and 18th at the Regional Leipzig. Yeah. So both very good players, and they know what to do. Yeah. This isn't the first time that they proved no. themselves, for sure. So we're getting underway here. Gavin's starting us off, and he's opening with the Rock Ruff. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know what a typical start for this deck is supposed to look like, but I, I mean, imagine you just get basics with energy on I them. mean, you can't go wrong with attaching and doing jet punch, like. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I think Gavin, Gavin's best approach is maybe using uh, Saiga early on mm. to bring as much energy as, uh, as possible in play. But then again, he also has three energy prized, so, and the beast energy is so... He does, but it, it's not going to snob Zygarde too much because mm -hmm. Zygarde uh, has a double colorless for its first yeah, attack, sure, of course, sure. and of which he plays four of. So again, it, it just to me looks like this, this whole focus of this list is getting this Zygarde to go. Mm -hmm. So maybe we'll see a Zygarde turn two, like retreating with the Rockruff? Yeah, that gets the energy in the discard pile for the attack mm -hmm. as well. Um, and he's got an Ultra Ball in his hand, he could Ultra Ball away another fighting energy. Um, again, all of this is to potentially hit the Zygarde, he'd still need a DCE to attack. Yeah, and then he can... Play, uh, yeah. use, use, uh, Orin Guru to draw back again. Yeah. Well, he judges himself in the Ultra Ball, which isn't too bad. He can just mm -hmm. use it to get a Lele next turn. Yeah. Bad thing is that Ilya Price one of his weakness policies, but uh, he should, like, if he draws prizes, he gets them, so... Yeah, if he, in the order that we've... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, ex, ex, we ex, hope ex. people take them in. Yeah. And he's still one in deck, so... Yeah. But I can imagine that he tries to set up uh, some Sorax, though. Just for the raw draw power. Uh, let's see. Yeah, usually with those org decks, it's even if you are being here for weakness, your whole engine relies on them. Mm -hmm. You still need them on yeah. the board. Yeah, yeah. That's maybe maybe they don't rely on. Or he don't re relies on Macago due to just draw raw, raw draw power from yeah. the Sorks. And maybe as well, he just needs fewer resources. Maybe it's like, well, Buzzwall and an energy isn't too particularly difficult to get out. I don't really need Macago for that. I'll just yeah. play other stuff instead. Like one of the interesting things about Gavin's deck is he plays. We were talking about that he's uh, he he got two field blowers in and he plays four Brooklyn Hills. 
Like, yeah. <laughs> th- th- this man was prepared for trying to. Yeah, him. he was. But it pays. It paid off, I guess. He's yeah, nine, exactly. One, three and has potential win in for top uh, top eight. Mm, definitely. And so we skip check punch potentially. Another nest ball, maybe for Zerua, or another bus wall? Yeah, uh, Zerua. Zerua, starting mm. to get himself set up. Yeah, yeah just wild lists on both of them, the more I read. <laughs> um, and it's really cool to see these crazy lists be in winning in positions as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, we've featured our, our fair share of crazy decks on the stream so far today, so it's nice to keep that trend up. Yeah, it's European meta, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, Ilya debating on where to put the 30 damage from the boss, from the jet punch. I can see it being, yeah, I can see it become in handy, like, doing jet punches multiple times on the Oranguru, since it has also fighting uh, weakness. Yeah, that's the thing. I think so people it, underrate that as mm-hmm, well. So it like, can be an easy one prize. The, you know, if you are jet punching over and over again, it makes sense to target the same thing that's going to, like, go down eventually. I think... Ideally, Ilya would have liked to target like a Dianthi Prism Star with that. Um, I think you get a lot of value out of doing mm-hmm. that, actually. The thing is, can Gavin find the rock, uh, the, the Lycan Rock energy and probably like a Dianthi Prism Star? He, yeah, he pressed, pressed Dianthi Prism Star to, to get the knockout on this uh, and the possible GX from Ilya. Maybe? If he really wanted to, he could just Dangerous Rogue. It wouldn't be a KO, actually, no. Yeah, 90 but... HP. My bad. <laughs> Yeah, but what if he finds the... He has an energy in hand, so he can strike for three. Oh, no. Mm. So he's going for the Dancer's Prison Star. He could go for Dancer's Prison Star, star on his own, and then it's 190, right? 150, 180, 200. Yeah, so he th- could. That, that would have been enough. But then again, you have to rely on drawing the, yeah. the Prison Star. And if you're wondering, well, why doesn't he want to use Zygar GX's attack? Um, he might not mind that much about it. He does play no Bonnie in his list, um, which unfortunately, every time we see, we see Zygarde, it seems to also be with no Bonnie. Um, poor Bonnie. <laughs> so yeah. he does go for the dangerous Roke on the Dianthi, and getting rid of Dianthi early game is usually pretty good. Yeah, because like the boss wall and boss wall jack stacks benefit a lot from damage modifiers, like the Dianthi Prism Star. We had a lot of Kokui and Choice Band and getting rid of the... The Dianthi, which can't come back since since it's in the Lost Zone, that's that, that's a good start. Yeah. There was always the greedy play there where Gavin could have taken out the Tapu Lele instead. He would have been doing enough damage. Mm-hmm. But now would just activate B-String and then Ilya would be able to respond really quickly and Gavin's board just wouldn't be able to keep up. Yeah. So it's a smart way of taking the Dianthi there. So, <clears throat> as, we were sp- as we were speaking of damage modifiers, Kukui is all over the place in, in, in this tournament. So, um, Ilya's playing two and... Um. I think Gavin is playing none. All over the place except this deck. Yeah, so. <laughs> but none is, is like a, one of the most popular cards. Oh wait, no, I see one copy of it here. Yeah, there's a single copy of it in this one. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so it's 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 super popular in in uh, in this regional. Yeah. Now Ilya does put the weakness policy down on uh, Zorik, and one of the interesting things as well is you know we've been seeing Buzzwall paired with Macargo Oranguru combo before. Um, but without the Macargo, Gavin's going to have to manually draw into these field lower. Yeah, he has. Uh, so it's a little more tricky for him. Mm-hmm. So he can't stack his deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can, but we'll call the judge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess he has a Goose Mine hand, maybe? Or he's, he has to, to play draw support to get... Mm. Yeah, he has a Goose Mine. Yeah. Opting for the Oranguru to um, deny Gavin's draw support. Uh, could be. He's not getting the knockout currently, though. Oh, yeah, I see. It's not enough. It's 60, so it's 90. Maybe for a potential jet punish later on? Potentially, yeah. yeah. With only three cards in hand for Gavin as well, though, um, he's not going to expect the Oranguru to retreat. Now, Gavan could attach DC manually retreat if he draws into it. He has an escape rope in hand, though. Oh, he has an escape rope in hand as well. Okay. I think so. Gavin's deck is also, like, in the re- <laughs> And as I said, <laughs> he should <laughs> draw into his field lower. There it is. <laughs> I think we jinxed it. Probably. Yeah. Commentator curse. There's the escape rope. That, that, you know what? That is a great four card hand from Gavin. Mm-hmm. Going into the buzz wall. Um, so he's going to instruct. Hope to hit an energy, I guess. Looks like he miffed it. Well, then again, Ilya has to attach to Lele to retreat it, to double it, GX. Yeah, uh, it's not too bad. And, uh, buzz wall GX has 190 HP, so it's not in fear of getting knocked out right now. So. Yeah, for sure. 
And he's just going to Ultra Ball his hand away. Okay. <laughs> that works too. Ultra Ball's away, um, one of his B strings, and he is only playing two. Mm-hmm. So that Ultra Ball will hurt him a little bit. Yeah, it will. But he, he finds himself a little drawing to six cards, so might, maybe he's finding the energy to just start jet punching 50 and 30 to the bench. Yeah. I wonder where the other 30 go. I can see them on the Sorak, maybe. Mm. Well, now that he's gotten rid of the weakness policy, he might not be too concerned about getting his HP down that much. Mm-hmm. Like he's got, he's one energy away from Claw Slash, and it goes on the Claw Slash will be a good yeah, play with yeah, that yeah. one. Uh, I could see it going onto the Buzzwall, I think. Okay. Um, as well as that, like the reason I think he Ultra Ball there and kept digging for energy was because you know Buzzrock lists, and they've always been a little like this. Um, attaching energy every turn is a really, really important part. Yeah, of it is. So he needs to give himself all the outs to it, and he did hit the energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's going to go ahead and with the Jet Punch. Yeah. Like. Also, like especially in so uh, in Lycan Rock decks, you it hurts so much to miss an attachment for turn. Mm. But if you you just you just can go for jet punch all day long as long as you can do one attachment per turn, and you'll be good. Exactly. So we see the power pad to recycle uh, supporters, shoveling them into into his into his deck. There was. One Guzma and the other one was like a Lily, I think. Yeah, he played a Lily turn one, so I, I imagine it was. Mm-hmm. Unless he had something else in there that I'm not aware of, but definitely a Guzma. The question is, does he attach an attack, or does he play, or does he retreat? Well, that Oranguru is on 90 now, so it is one jet punch away from it. Yeah, it is, and it's kind of tempting to just do that. Hmm. Uh, does he play any switching cards in his deck? Uh, let's see. Yes, it is. Looks like no. No. So if he's retreating this Lele, it's going to have to be paying the double colors. Mm-hmm. And this this is second DC, so <clears throat> he has to like be more conservative after this one. Yeah, it's definitely not ideal. Mm-hmm. But then again, like getting jet punch knocked out for the um, for the Oranguru is is pretty big though, because yeah. like Gavin draw like 10 cards off of it so it already paid off for him exactly it would put a lot of pressure on Gavin to find this last V-string as well like yeah uh, because if he doesn't I'm sure Ilya would start taking more prizes if he could there we see the rock graph he's only playing a 1-1 one, one line but I think it's mostly just to close out games with dangerous rogue mm. so sometimes 1-1 one, one is enough but sometimes like he's, he's pretty lucky with his prizes to be honest yeah and also after he's crammed his deck with like the weakness policies and the buzz walls and mm-hmm. the, the, the buzz wall GX and um, he's fit in so much stuff that I guess he probably only had room for the one one like in Ruck. Yeah. He's going for that manual tree. They've crazy lists. Absolutely. So I guess it's 30 knockout, yeah. And there he goes. Draws the weakness policy, yeah. Okay. He'll probably be happy to see that as well if mm-hmm. uh, he doesn't get if he doesn't get Gozmit this turn. Yeah. That would be <laughs> heartbreaking to watch. So Gavin's got the double colors energy in hand, so he he could attach it to the Lycanroc if he wanted to. I don't know if he has a Guzma or not in there. The thing is, Ilya all, still has his Jax attack available, but Gavin hasn't. Yeah. So in the end game, it could be kind of hard for Gavin to, to get all the prizes he needs. Yeah, it could. Usually Dangerous Rogue is that one attack that you mm-hmm. use that that's the one that does a lot of damage. Yeah, because, that's the one that takes like, me those prizes. In the current metagame, there's like at least three to four Pokemon on the bench. Mm. Um, most of the times there's four or five, so it's most of the times it's a guaranteed knockout. Yeah. Especially with like Kukui, Choice Band, and Diancy Prism Star. Yeah. So he's gra- going to grab the Zygarde. Um, Ilya gives him a nod to acknowledge that he sees the Zygarde coming down. Um, probably not something he expected to see here. No, but I mean, it worked out in the World Championship for Kiki? Clive, I Clive, think yeah. Was, yeah. Team the Clive. Fan, the fan favorite. Yeah. yeah. So maybe it works out for Gavin too. Clive is inspiring people into the new mm-hmm. format. <laughs> all right, so the choice band there is all right. It'll do a little extra damage to the, to the active Buzzwall. Um, the DC going on to the Zygarde. Uh, if you don't know, Zygarde's first attack just does 50 damage, I believe, and it attaches 2 energy from your discard pile to the Zygarde, uh, which is really scary because it has a lot of HP, and if you can't KO it in that turn, you're going to get punished. Yeah, you, you got to get punished. And it also has no psychic weakness, I guess. Yeah, it's weak yeah. grass. Yeah. Which... which comes in handy, especially against Goblin decks or Banette decks. Yeah, and the cool thing about this is, like, 
if you you know having two different weaknesses with the buzzwalls and the like and rocks and the zygards, it means you have outs to different matchups. You yeah, know? You if have, you come across a Bennett, you're not you're not too a bigger range. Yeah, if you come across like a Lissapod, you you can use buzzwall. You know, you can swap swap in and out. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's like those two changes, like adding two extra zygards that make a huge difference. Mm. Hey, that's, uh, um, was it Ilias Prism Stanek? Oh. I, I hope. It's a pink sleeve, so it has to be. Okay. <laughs> I also got really worried <laughs> there for a second. Was, for a moment, <laughs> he was, was playing really Dude sure. Oh Yeah, he, he used the dangerous rope to knock it out. Yes, yeah. he did, he did. <laughs> oh. And um, it's just, it's on Kevin's side of the mat, so I yeah, was like, it was kind of. <laughs> it's a moment there. <laughs> that would have been bad. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a little bad. So he decides to put 30 on the rock rope um, again. He punishes it if he doesn't evolve it because he can jet punch it a couple more times and get mm-hmm. the KO. And if he does evolve it, you know, it softens up that 200 HP to be easier to hit. Yeah. yeah. Especially when he goes down to four prizes and then other three, three prizes and can hopefully make use of his uh, last beast ring. Yeah. So it's a very tense game so far, I think. Because mm-hmm. like, like, normally in these games you see, like, you know, knockouts get taken, both players throw down the beast rings, more knockouts get taken, and then the, game, the game's over in someone's favor. But this is really... People are really can, like being kind of conservative in this one. Yeah, they have to think about where to attach and when to attach, and yeah. just chip damage all over the place, and like preparing for bigger knockouts like in later turns. Yeah, exactly. And they're really carefully like placing this damage with the jet punches as well. Like I've I've and really enjoyed Ilya's plays of picking off that Orangaroo in the early game. Yeah. Um, with like three attacks in total, it took, but he spread so much damage while he was doing that. Because like Gavin had long, so I, uh, had like really good four hard uh, four hand cards. And he played some down and then could redraw again, and now he can't anymore. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Gavin's hand isn't looking too hot though, it looks like it's just a choice band, the DC, DC and Brooklet. Yeah. So... Yeah. I mean, if he had the Oranguru, he could just attach choice band and maybe later DC and keep on drawing. But at this point, mm. not too much anymore. So... Hopefully, top, st- hey, top decks are supporting he needs. Yeah. Be interested to see what options he finds. Meanwhile, on Ilya's turn, he's playing an Ultra Ball right here and kind of having a tough time deciding what he wants to discard uh, and gets rid of the Cuckoo in the end. Maybe he's trying to go for the Lycanroc to soften up the Psygod. Mm, and he has the Ultra Ball away of E-String as well, so Gavin, not the only person doing that mm-hmm. this game. Um, yeah, he could do that. He could switch around. Well, he's gone for the Zerua anyway. I think he's realized that, like, I need to run hot from this point on mm-hmm. in the game. So, get, so get just, more the just if there. I can like outspeed Gavin, maybe I have the better, the better outs. Yeah, definitely. So there's that other weakness policy. Um, again, Gavin has a second field lower somewhere. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he top decked yeah. it last time. <laughs> so it's one twenty, one seventy. Yeah, it's 170. It's not going to be quite enough for the knockout. Mm-hmm. But it but, does put it in uh, jet punch range. Yeah, and then again, as far as... Um, maybe Gavin can find a field blower and attach another energy and then can... If he top picks it here, he can just take the KO. So, oh. <laughs> Tried to do it again. Well, one thing he could do is retreat and use Zygarde's attack if he really wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just to power up the Zygarde. Yeah, exactly. And I mean... And it's a good cool here. It's unlikely. Oh, the Kakui could be cool. Let's see. He drew. No, unfortunately, that, that weakness policy is really putting in work here for Ilya. I think he drew another bus wall. It looks like it. Bus wall jacks. Maybe he's got a B string in his hand, does he? No. No, it's, it's something red. <laughs> <laughs> it's something red. But I think it's. He's not showing all of it to us, unfortunately. <laughs> he's debating on, on whether to retreat or not. Yeah, and like I mean, let's just take the time to appreciate how much work this weakness policy is putting in for Ilya mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, it, it's keeping him alive from multiple different posi- in multiple different ways. Um, and Gavin is already playing like two field blowers, which is yeah. above average. So <laughs> and it's still working. Mm-hmm. So it goes for the attack. It is a two retreat cost on that Lycan rock. I feel like, like retreating it to the bench is like. Ilya might really want that to happen, you know, that, that, yeah. the jet punch is right there. Mm-hmm. They did the math correctly. Yeah. yeah. So it could just be a claw slash, try and get use out of this thing before it does go down. Um, he did already get the dangerous rogue off with it, of course, but... And still it's, it's 150. Yeah. This turn, 
all he's really going to do is be able to put chip damage on the board, unless he wants to power up the Zygarde. So if he's doing that, he may as well do it with the thing that's going to go down. I'm not sure. Like, if he he should he, he could maybe attach the choice band. So it was with Kui. So he uses claw, claw slash one ten. Then it's one fifty with the with the um, Dancy. Dancy yeah. and with the with the Kukui, it's yeah. 150, and then it's 180 with the choice ban, and then he can jet punch. Yeah, and that's jet punch range actually. So that might be an interesting play. Mm. But unfortunately, he either missed the choice ban or um, something else. But yeah. the Zorok is on. Uh, it still takes quite a bit of damage. Yeah, it puts it in Zygarde KO range. Yeah, it does, which is cool. But then again, you have this weird, really weird dynamic in this game. So like, if the Zygarde comes in and uses his attack to KO the Zorok. Um, that'll activate Ilya's B-String. So that means he can just come in with the Buzzwall again and <laughs> be able to KO the Zygarde in return. It, it's a very, very strange thing. I think Ilya's playing Acerola. He's playing Acerola, so this would be the perfect Acerola turn. Oh, if absolutely. If can find it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he played Cynthia, but maybe he can retreat and do it in a later turn. Yeah. I mean, the Buzzwall itself isn't... Like, if he could still Acerola that Buzzwall with damage on it. He's got a fresh Buzzwall now, so it's less important, but yeah. It's a very tactical game. Like. It is, yeah. He's even debating who he wants to take the knockout on, where he wants to take it. Um, this is really good because he can try and um, lock Diancy in the active, even, if, if something he wants to do, and then retreat to that buzzwall. Yeah. <laughs> it feels a little bit like watching a game of chess. So yeah, it is. They're like it? planning to, uh, turns ahead. It's and their, their damage comes all over the place. Yeah, and he does go for that Diancy stall option. Mm hmm. We've already seen Gavin play an escape rope, so he might think, well, he's got less switching options now. Unfortunately, he has to use the... Oh, no, so he's going for boss wall. Yeah, he can pay with the retreat and still pick off the Lycan Rock. Yeah. Um, put himself down to three prize cards remaining. Mm -hmm. And that Lycan Rock is fully powered up as well for Claw Slash. Yeah. And for Dangerous Rope, of course. And for Dangerous Rope. So it looks kind of good for Ilya at the moment. Pay and retreat with the double colorless energy. It's painful to watch. <laughs> it's painful to watch, but it's also like, at least he can do it. Uh, and leaving the buzzwall active as well is a little trickier for. Um, I'm not sure what the. I'm. If there's I some know. confusion here. I have or, no idea. Uh, maybe he's just thinking about whether or not he wants to do it or not. But yeah, no, leaving the buzzwall active um, from Elliot's perspective is really, really good because it means that the Zygarde it comes in. Um, what's 110 plus 70 is 180. That mm -hmm. buzzwall's going to survive. There is okay, no, maybe not. <laughs> uh, oh, I, th it's, yeah. I thought it was a Kukui. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's going to be Cell Connector is the name of the attack. You just attach two Fighting Energy cards from your discard pile to it, and then you're pairing up the Land's Wrath um, for 130, which with Choice Band Dianzi is 180, and that's good he has, numbers. He has yeah. no more access to Verdict Jacks, though. He, but it, yeah. but it, then again, Sakat has 200 HP, which is very high com for other, uh, compared to other Jacks. 200 also. HP on a base is quite a lot. Yeah, it is. Someone should probably tell Sander about that. He might want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> then again, he had to play DC again. So yeah, true. Maybe maybe he can fit one side at one DC. So. <laughs> because he can attach two energies, not not just Cell fighting. Connect Cell Connector does twenty <laughs> more damage than Tackle. Okay. So, <laughs> so you can like. Uh, Cell Connect and attach uh, the Rainbow Energy and, and the um, Cone Energy from, from the Discord pile. I think like it's that. just Fighting Energy, unfortunately. Is it? Oh, I missed I miss the symbol, sorry. Is it a Lycanroc? That is a Lycanroc in the active, yes. It's a very <laughs> shiny Lycanroc in the active. Yeah, it is. Uh, and that's got a dangerous rogue ready to go, and uh, mm -hmm. it's, hitting, it's hitting 200 right now. So yeah, it is. Maybe oh, and he's there, got the B-string and everything. <laughs> that's, that's huge, yeah. Yeah, really, really huge turn. Um, and so like, yeah, Gavin's could be. Yeah, incredible like turn of momentum there, familiar. That that was one of those games that, like you're, you're waiting for it to pop off for so long, mm -hmm. and then when it does, it's just like B string, loads of damage, loads of damage, loads of damage. Uh, but all that spreading that they did with Jet Punch earlier on the game on, on both sides, you know, it was really adding up throughout the whole thing. I think what uh, Gavin could have done was uh, attaching the choice band actually to the what was it? What was it? Uh, uh, when the, he was attacking his yeah, with like yeah, uh, yeah. with like rock. So he was uh, he put the the Sorok in, in jet punch range. Yeah, I think that that was definitely a good spot. But sometimes, there. like those micro decisions matter in, in the long run. So yeah, true, and we're not true. players had. So they, they have, I don't know if it would have won of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like sometimes they they have different plans that we don't know. So 
And the other and the other thing about that is like he played Kakui that turn, right? And Kakui is one of those supporters that doesn't feel like a support. Like I had this one like with like Misty's determination and stuff and like Lily for two and stuff like that. When you draw two cards, you're like, that wasn't my support for the turn. Yeah. I, I can play like Guzma and all this stuff like that. It, do, it doesn't feel like you did you it, did it a significant yeah. thing. But then, but then again I like the concept of like draw two or maybe maybe three and plus X. Like yeah, yeah. We, we saw um the the, the Superman player. The Mars again? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Mars. There's that other one that's like Pokemon Breeder. Is that the one it's called? It's like draw two and then heal 20 from your active. <laughs> which is... And there's also the supporter which like draw two and just got a random card of your yeah, opponent's yeah. hand. I'm not, Th- I'm... Those are kind of funny. And they, they, they come in handy. Like, Kukui was not seen too much play when it came out, right? Yeah, exactly. It was like, yeah. Sometimes it was one-off at best. And now it's like, we have... Like all kind of decks, we have uh, Kukui's like two to three m- most of the time. So mm. let's see how if Gavin can make make it one one. Yeah, it's like he's got a Temple Coco on his opening hand and a Brooklyn Hill. Like that's really good. He can and I just, think he has a Basil on the hand as well. Yeah, he can just search for whatever he wants and just retreat to it. That's fantastic. I mean, maybe he doesn't want the fighting weakness on the Coco. Um, but like I think I take it. Like it's a free retreater. Yeah. DCE in hand as well. Uh, he could just get Zygarde up right now if he wants. And just and Beast Energy in his opening hand. Okay, um, <laughs> this, that, that's really good. Like, oh, he's Zygarde, not not Blossom. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to see what that last card is in his hand. He's got there's two cards at the end that I can't quite make out because one thing he could he would like here is a draw supporter. Yeah. He's got a Scape Rope. That's what it is, and an Ultra Ball, so he can just grab Lele if he really wants to get more cards out. Yeah, and he has also Brooklyn Hill, so. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> that puts um, Ilya in a really awkward position because if he doesn't retreat that, so yeah, he does. It's going down. So maybe he's going to grab a Lily to make use of the ruling that if you play it on your first turn, you drop to eight cards. Yeah, and he'll do it from like only like one or one two card. cards. card. Yeah, he's, hand, yeah, he's still a beast, uh, beast energy in hand. Yeah, he does. So he opted not to play the Brooklyn Hill, knowing that Ilya has a lot of fighting types in his own deck. He so, didn't want to give him that advantage. Yeah, so maybe he's, he's like, okay, can I set up enough with raw draw mm. power? If yes, I don't need to bench the the Brooklyn Hill. Yeah, exactly. And if he gets Buzzwall off this Lily, like he, well, he's already attached for the turn, but yeah, like it, he doesn't need the Brooklyn Hill at all. Mm-hmm. It's a weird stadium in that you sometimes you only need it like in the first couple of turns of the game. Like late game, you don't find yourself needing it too much. And when he's setting up, like I don't think he's too bothered if he doesn't find any more Pokemon this turn. He can still play it next turn, so... He might Ultra Ball it away again here. Okay, he's take the Fighting Energy because Zygarde's attack attaches it. Yeah. So a very high value Ultra Ball. Yeah, that makes sense. And getting an early knockout on, on, on Sarua is also very good. Exactly, yeah. So it pressures Ilya to find another, uh, like at least one or two more Saruas. Mm. As- that Escape Rope was really good for Gavin last mm-hmm. game, actually, as well. It it's is, been good it for him here, too. He's at least playing two... Is he playing more? Two Gubbies? Yeah, he's playing two Gubbies yeah. Escape Rope. So one is in the prizes, but he should draw into the into it f- fairly quickly so mm. uh, Ilya's beast energy is prized as well so that might end up playing a part here mm-hmm. and he also has prized to ultra ball so some part of his setup might be disrupted so yeah for sure let's see I think the, the ideal thing to go is like at least one bus wall and like one or two Saruas, but that's kind of hard a lot to ask for right yeah, it's like on the first turn of the game at least anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, he'd probably, if he can't retreat the Saru, he'd like another one on the bench I'm imagining. Yeah, because he needs to drop off from, yeah. from the trade ability. And this is where I think Zygarde can actually be kind of scary. Yeah. Like, you know, Gavin's gone first. He's got the double colorless energy. He's got the energy in the discard pile. Um, there's no way Ilya takes a knockout on the Zygarde next turn unless he get like, because Gavin's not going to play into Dangerous and Rogue Gavin, or anything like that. And Gavin's Zygarde is not going to get like, knocked out like very soon so exactly yeah it's gonna stick around um he's still got verdict gx available to him this time around um yeah he's got a lot he can do here so he, he can with a uh, cell connector he skips like multiple turns of, of attach, attaching energy so he has more time to think about to attach to boss wall or boss wall gx or even the lycan rock so mm. he gets quite ahead then yeah and if he takes a ko on his real while he's using cell connector that's even, that's all the better mm-hmm. yeah so we are going to see the Lily 4-7 uh, on Alias' side as well. Yeah, but the Psygod in the active puts a lot of pressure on, on Ilya to find the basics, turn yeah. one. 
But he's got another Zerubba, so he won't be too worried. Mm-hmm. And this time he has not... Uh, the weakness policy is unpriced. Yeah, exactly. He has both of them available. Mm. Gavin's still having those field blowers, though. And mm-hmm. with a much bigger hand size, more likely to be able to deal with them this game. What you could do, though, is... Like, place Procopetil, use the field blower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he actually could, yeah. Because field blower will hit... Hit the field eventually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they have more than enough broken pills in both decks. That's literally for the full eight cards. Um, after attaching that double colors to... It's important to, to uh, make an attachment every turn. Oh, and there's a second Saru on the bench, which is really good. It is important, and I think he has to attach to a rock yeah. rope this turn. Yes. He has to like at least say, well, Gavin's going to be aware of this dangerous rope, but I have to threaten it anyway. So, like, a lot of Zerua on the bench there immediately, which is really, really cool. Um, he might still retreat this one. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, you could survive. That, that changes um, things. The only thing is, it'll, like, Gavin can just play down the Brooklyn Hill and search out the Ansi and still get this KO. Yeah, sure. So, But he already discarded one or two? Or does he have an A here? Yeah, okay. he, he plays the full four okay. so he's not worried about that at all. But at least Ilya's fighting. Yeah. <laughs> So Ilya gets his own buzzwall down, and that's going to be a pass the turn. Um, I don't think Ilya's going to mind too, too much if this Zerua goes down. Like, um, the rest of his board is looking excellent. So. The thing is, Gavin has now to watch out how much he bench, how many Pokemon he benches. Yeah, he because really does. Dangerous Rogue can take out the, the buzzwall, uh, the Psygat, sorry, the Psygat GX mm -hmm. um, next turn. Well, even with three bench Pokemon, it could. It could do it with just a choice pan and a Diancy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's what I was saying. But then again, you want to have to early knock out on Surura. Maybe that's a, that weakness policy was actually a really smart play on Ilya's part then, mm -hmm. because it basically means he needs the third bench Pokemon, and that gives him an out to take care of the Slyguard immediately. Yeah. So he puts that on the Lele. Um, really, he's only other attacker, and again, he doesn't want to bench too many Pokemon. He doesn't want to power up this, da this dangerous rogue. Um, but energy rogue is always an attack you can use, so it's not out of the question to attach to Lele. Um, just to give you something to attack with. Yeah. Sure. So we do see our set first cell connector of the game, or a well, of this game anyway, um, taking that KO. I mean, Ilya has to find a lot of puzzle pieces, but it's not in, like crazy impossible. So yeah. he, if he has like Lycan Rock, Energy, Choice Band, and Diancy. Mm. He literally for eight uh, last turn, he's got two potential um, trades coming if he evolves with these Zeroes. Yeah. Um, so it's not, not impossible. It's not out of the question. And Brook the Hill is already there. You can find that Diancy, no problem. Yeah, so. And he's also playing two choice band. This would have been such an ideal turn for Gavin to find his field lower. Um, partly to get his own Diancy, but partly just like you were saying, to get rid of his own Brooklyn Hill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and there we go. <laughs> there we go. Probably going for the Diancy. Oh, for. Going for Baby Buzz as okay. well. Okay. Just, just making sure that you have backup attackers for upcoming rounds. Yeah. So maybe he even has a Queen hand. Oh, yeah, that's another way he could possibly do it. Um, other than that, if Gavin takes one prize here, um, that Buzzwall is now all of a sudden in perfect Buzzwall range. So, But he is attaching again, committing again to the Rock Rope. Oh, he has to play on Judge. He is, he is preying on this. Could we see a surprise <laughs> attack coming? <laughs> or is he just trying to retreat this Rock Rope maybe, and that's why he attached the basic energy? Because, like, Vertic Jax plus Choice Band plus... Um, Diancy is enough to knock out a Lycanroc. Mm. So, or maybe he's just eyeing out for Choice Band and then Bloodthirsty Eyes on Tapolele to just draw more prizes. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he'd take the Diancy Prism Star because he took it last game. Like, he might still opt for that same line mm -hmm. of play. Some, some Sorox and two Brooklyn Hill potential for, for Gavin. <laughs> And a choice band. I mean, he, he plays a lot of them, so... He does play a lot of them. Uh, that choice band, though, like you were saying, could come in handy. Mm -hmm. And still, now, attaching the energy, is he still can retreat for maybe the bus wall to sacrifice this, or... Yeah, he can. Lance Rath does hit 130. Mm -hmm. and as we've been saying all weekend, 130 is a nice number. So... So... Because... I think you have to save the Rock Rope, right? It's it's the yeah. biggest day you yeah, have to yeah, do yeah. with this with this Lygard right now. Oh, and the top deck of the Guzma. Oh, he is no. going to be buzzing about that one. Mm -hmm. And just straight up free retreats that Tabu Goko. 
That's a big punish. It is, it is. Yeah. Ilya took a big risk on that judge and unfortunately has not paid off for him. No. He has not priced a single uh, Sorak though, he couldn't find it. Yeah. <laughs> Two Brooklyn Hill in hand. <laughs> I just, yeah, there's I, already I, one in this card, one play, so. <laughs> and they're all Gavins. <laughs> Yeah. Like I really like this event. It's like his hand is so clogged, but like it doesn't matter. I've got I've got a Zygarde in the active. It's got like four energy on it. The thing is, Zygarde and Broken Hill is like the pretty much best setup you can have for yeah, yeah. the boss boss wall Garbodor matchup. So he did remove the Rockwell from the board. He still opted not to use his own Broken Hill there. Um, that's probably safe enough. I mean, what other Pokemon does he even want at this point? Like mm -hmm. <laughs> he's got Zygarde. Top decks, yeah, and energy now. So we might use the Brooklyn Hill now so that you can start attaching to things. Um, we do see that um, Sledgehammer turn come around, so 140 damage, able to do, um, at least retaliate with a good amount of damage to him. I think Verdict checks could come in handy now. Yeah, I mean, you're even, right. even though Lens Wrath does the job, but then again, you save your Slide out for a potential knockout. Looks so. like Gavin spotted that one as well. Yeah. He's gone for the Verdict GX. Um, <laughs> Zygarde is really going to town here. He's putting Ilya in a very tough spot, to be honest. He really is. And at this point, I'm, I mean, he ha they have a lot of time left, but nonetheless, they probably want they want to have a winner. Yeah. There's 16 minutes left on the round. Yeah, so, so, so I might be thinking about... Yeah, this is the thing. It is a win and end game as well, we have to yeah. remember. A draw would probably... I mean, it would probably both them out. It, it, it's not something either of them would want to risk, necessarily, yeah. anyway. So they're going to have to play fast. Uh, they're going to have to be aware of the time that's coming down on them. Uh, and Ilya might decide he has to scoop this in order to win a game. I think so. Maybe. It's something he has to consider. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, there could still be outs to him to win this particular game. Ilya's on, uh, on B-string prizes now. He's going to opt for this KO. 120, 170. Is it KO? No, he, he, he used Verdict He GX. used Verdict GX, yeah, actually. So okay, the, of course. Yeah, so he's pretty much safe from wow. getting knocked out. So he's really far ahead in the price race. Yeah, well, he's had a choice band. Um, Gavin would still need like a Kukui or something to take this KO uh, on the active. Mm -hmm. But again, puts it in Jet Punch range. Yeah. So, and that's always good. It's 160, 180. So if you can fight yeah. a Kukui. 180 right now. He does not find the Kukui. Okay, so. but he can Jet Punch take yeah. the knockout. So, maybe at this point, I might be thinking about uh, going on with game three. Mm, potentially, yeah. For Ilya, yeah. He's going for the nest ball here. Right? He wasn't sorry, he traded that away. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's Kukui, it's 50, it's 70, so 70 plus one, it's enough for the knockout with Jet Punch. It is, yes. Um, what does he want to put this 30 on then, I guess is his question. Maybe on the Rock Ruff. Yeah, it, it really puts pressure on him to evolve it really quickly. We're going to see a Brooklyn Hill as well. But then again, there's just no more fear of uh, of uh, like Rock GX stuck out. Ilya, I think as well, like he really has to hit B-String this turn, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. Speak of it, B-String, there it is. So yeah, that could potentially be good for him. He's not out of this game yet. Okay, <laughs> some kind of... And he's playing this in the air. Um, <laughs> let's just add up the damage on this because yeah, all, always so, with puzzle decks is like so many da damage modifiers. They have so, uh, yeah. su such high HP. Like the like Saiga mm. 200, Buzzle 190, and all of them are basics. I will say as well that he probably didn't play the Kukui, he probably traded it away. Oh, um, yeah. When it, when it hit yeah, the discard. Yeah. I was, I had, was 50 50 on which one he decided to do there, mm -hmm. but if he's played it in the air, I assume it was a trade. Um, and that's probably what that little conversation was that they just had there. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, 60 does indeed end up on the Rock Row. <laughs> Now Ilya's board is looking an awful lot better. It, it does, it does. But having said that, Gavin's on his B-string turn now. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, Buzz wasn't playing flip range. <laughs> it is. I forgot he played that. He's got the DC in his hand and everything. He could, he could also like um, risk a stretcher, the side guard, he retreat and, and power it up again. Oh, he could, and he might be thinking about that. The other thing is that rock rope is almost... Um, it's 10 HP away from, from being knocked out. But then again, it's not too important for Gavin anymore since he has no extra strength GX attack anymore. That's so. true. It's just whether or not he wants to prevent the prize or not. But he has got a pretty good lead, so he might not worry too much. Yeah, and then you go down to one prize and... If, mm. if you can pull up... You, wait, yeah, actually, 
he could go down to one prize here. Um, he's debating on benching the Orangaroo, though. So it looks like he's going to have to commit to this flying flip KO. Mm -hmm. Because if he if he can pull up the Psygod, if he, if he played um, Rescue Shetra and powered up the Psygod, he was one Guzma away from... Yeah, he did one prize to go and just have a Zygarde in the active. Oh, so he shuffles it back. He's going to shuffle the back. So he has it in mind, in mind that this is potential. Yeah. Um, it's also burning cards out of his hand. Um, he's clearly really valuing drawing cards with his Orangaroo. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he's thinking that he really does need to evolve this Rockruff, um, and that that's how he thinks he's going to win this game, for sure. Yeah. I think if he evolves it and brings up the Dianti Prism Star, um, oh, you get two more Brooklet Hill in his hand? They're still in his hand, I guess. Oh, they're still in his hand, yeah. He, he wasn't one. showing at them. He did top that Guzma, though. So what he could do is bring up the Dianti Prism Star and then Flying Flip. Oh, I see. Yeah. And do this sort of combo where you lock it in the active... And then try and get your extra prizes here. This could be bad for Ilya. Mm -hmm. 20 damage to everything. Um, and we'll see how Ilya responds to this. He'd need his own kind of switching card or something like that. Uh, and if he doesn't, I think he just has to scoop. Um, well, having said that... Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> Kevin's board is not particularly good, but... So let's see if uh, Ilya is able to retreat or... At least get the Diancy out of the active, maybe with the Guzma or something. Yeah. It's going to be close. So activates the Brooklyn Hill. Um, maybe Guzma to to bring out your opponent's uh, Diancy and then Jet Punch, take the Rockruff, and from there on. Yeah, yeah, try and retaliate. You can, you can use like Beast Ring turns. Mm. Yeah, that does seem like something he could do, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, the because type of Coco, by the way, is just to note that Jeff Punch is hitting 50 right now with weakness that's 100, but even, so... Since even though, like, there's no potential threat of the Lycanroc GX attack, Lycanroc itself can still Guzma for the Sorok on the bench, since it, recent, since it has weakness, so yeah. it is still a threat. And Ilya does not know that Gavin's hand is to Brooklyn Hill. <laughs> so he's got, he, he'll have the prize, the prizes he just took and the top deck. So. Kevin just really, really wants to make sure that he has access yeah. to Brooklyn Hill. <laughs> They're still there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, loads of decisions for Ilya to make here, uh, including one that, again, 10 minutes, the clock has to be on these, pe on these players here. Yeah. So lots of decisions to make. The trades, of course, have to be completely perfect here. And I, th I don't think that Ilya is able to like drag a game to like ten more minutes. Yeah, because I don't think he's going to be able to survive for that long. Gavin is on one prize. So he's playing the Guzma and debating on what, what to Guzma. This depends on whether he wants to stall. Which I think he has to almost at this point. He could, and if he does, then the Diancy seems like the right target. Yeah, I think so. Or he could bring up a Rangaru and do a hundred damage to it. Yes, but he's still an energy in hand, I think. So yes, he, he does. His GX attack and knuckle impact are still a th they can be a sort of that, thing. That's completely true. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes Ilya out of B string range, which mm -hmm. could be exactly what he needs. Or it takes Gavin out of B string range. My mm -hmm. apologies. And it would also, I mean, he doesn't know this, but it would take his beat ring out of the prizes. So it could fix some math. So, yeah, he's probably going to attach to the bus wall. He's a little bit short on damage. He needs a choice band. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's going to be absorption GX for the knockout. Yeah. And all of a sudden, Ilya's is in a pretty good position here. That beast ring is just so strong. It's just getting him straight it back is, into this is. game. Um, he took his prizes out of order, but he still got the beast, the beast energy. <laughs> this game is coming down to the absolute wire, isn't it? Like it is. So if Gavin can find Lycanroc, at double colorless Guzma, then he has game. Mm. If not, <laughs> Ilya has to find Guzma for game. Well, either way. He, he's got the rocker up there, so he could even just bring something up and stall. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't need, necessarily need to hit all of the pieces right now, but yeah. he would like to. He has an escape rope in his hand. Um, I don't think that's going to be of much advantage to him right now, but it does mean Ilya, it would force Ilya to retreat next turn, at least. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so checking it, uh, the underrated thing about Brooklyn Hill is 
Aside from just getting your Pokemon, you can check your deck. Yeah. And you, you can see what's left. You can. Especially in later stages, options. like not even in the later stage of this game. Like, I mean, in the later stage of the tournament, mm. where you're really exhausted, <laughs> sometimes you have to double check, right? Yeah, you can't remember all your prize mm -hmm. cards all the time. Uh, he's grabbing the, the baby buzz. Maybe to just thin out his deck? Mm hmm. Could be. So, maybe he has to draw support? Well, yeah, he does Cynthia thin there, yeah. yeah. He could have played the escape rope though, just to, he, just to just just to make sure that um, Ilya has to bring them th something up he doesn't want to. Yes. And having one less card in his hand. To the reason he might not have is that it means that he has to make his retreat return now. He ha like he'd have to retreat the Coco and then escape rope back into it, like or he'd have to like escape rope and then leave something in the active that didn't yeah, have free yeah, retreat. Yeah, sure. That could put him in an awkward position. Um, unfortunate time for him to hit his last B-string. He, he drew the Lycanroc? I don't know. Their cards are so close together. <laughs> I thought... Well, he's got energies for turn. So... He's not out of hope. DCE Lycanroc is what he's going for here, but he he's whiffing the DCE. Mm-hmm. Like, and after already using his GX attack so already on with that Brady GX, it did, did prevent some damage from hitting him. Um, he's finding himself in a position where he'd really like to be using that right now instead. Maybe he's going just to, to evolve the Lycanroc to bring up the Diancy. Yeah. He could also... Um, he hasn't used Instruct yet, but I don't think he can thin, thin out his hand. No, I don't think so. Yeah. He has a lot of draw supporters in his hand, I think. And the other thing here is that, you know... The game is dragging on pretty long, and like it, it is taking time to make all of these these decisions. And I think Ilya really, really wants to see something like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's got Guzma in hand, so he can afford to do this and just stall out some more. So he's going to attach and just hope that Ilya. Oh well, they lay for Guzma, and there it oh. is. Ilya's going to take the game, and he looks very happy <laughs> about that one indeed. That is probably top A for Ilya. <laughs> Relief. <laughs> what an exhausting game. It's so yeah. It was also an intense game. Yeah, I think Ilya played a lot of that really, really smart mm -hmm. though. Um, strange deck as well that he's playing. Yeah, he. But the, then again, like strange decisions often pay off. Uh, sometimes pay off, and in Ilya's, uh, in Ilya's case, it did. So. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Hi. <laughs> Just having the one one line of uh, of rock rough and like rock seemed enough mm. to, to put pressure on the board, but it's not. Too much to clunk your old deck, so... Yeah, absolutely. He made it work. Um, and I do want to make a point, though, as well, that, like, these guys were on stream in a win and in for top eight in a naturally really, really close match with a lot of really difficult decisions to make. The, the stress levels for this game must have been pretty high. Like, Besides the fact that they played nine rounds yesterday in five rounds. Yes, five exactly. Like, <laughs> like, and a lot went into that. At least Ilya had, had his uh, win in yesterday as well, so... You're under a real a lot of pressure, so yeah, absolutely. Um, we got time for a pack opening. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you want to do this one? Yeah, sure. It's burning. I honestly will raffle off the code. I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> this time we'll raffle off the code. You're not meant to say that on when live on air, but okay. <laughs> this is German burning shadows. So oh, please, please give us the GX. Yeah, Joe, Joe was like, I have hopes in this one because we I've selected it specifically. There's a code. And well, we have a holo card, <laughs> which is better than, <laughs> better than average. It's yeah, a holo. But then again, we have like nothing playable except maybe uh, that was burning shadows, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, burning shadows. So B U S. B U S. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for that round. Um, I guess the next round we'll be doing is top eight, right? It will be top eight shortly. We'll have a straw poll to choose uh, temp the, the matchups uh, if I can get that working. Awesome, yeah, um, you'll be detailing that in the chat, I assume. Yeah. Okay, so stay tuned for that, guys. Yeah. Um, thanks for watching.